What do artwork, StarCraft, and a beard have in common? In this video, we are going to discuss the virtue known as patience. All right, so here we go. Now, wait a minute. Wait just a minute. This is not an art video. Well, technically it is an art video, but what are we looking at right now? What in the world is this? This is not Photoshop or Krita or whatever. No, this is StarCraft 2. Now, I know in the little opening, I asked what do StarCraft and artwork and growing a beard have in common? And judging by, you know, the title of the video and the thumbnail and all that stuff, the answer is patience. Now, I have always loved the game StarCraft. I loved it ever since it came out in like 1998. Um, the, there was an expansion pack called Brood War that was very, very good. And then StarCraft II came out in like 2012, 2011, 2012, something like that. And I've always been enamored with it. I would watch like professional games and all that stuff. But I, I was always too anxious to get started learning. And I played a little bit way back in like 2013, 2014. And I got up to Silver League. We'll talk about leagues and stuff in a minute. But um, really, it, it came down to I was very anxious. I was anxious to play. I, I knew I wasn't very good. But I didn't want to come to terms with the fact that I wasn't very good. If that makes sense. Because whenever you play ranked on a, a ranked ladder system on uh, StarCraft... It's one versus one. Now, there's multiple different things. You can do co-op stuff and all that. But I was interested in one versus one, meaning it's just you versus an opponent. That's it. It just comes down to a battle of wits, a battle of who can play the game better. And I knew I wasn't very good, you know, so I would always play, like, against the computer. I would play versus AI. And, oh, well, I'm getting kind of better, and I can beat the medium AI now. Isn't that cool? You know, and I'd have that as my achievement, but I would always be kind of terrified to, uh, you know, to actually play another human being. Um, I saw all these pro players play it, and the game is extremely difficult, and it still is. But I, I kind of got in my own head about it, you know. And something that I didn't give myself back then is patience. Um, games like this, and really any skill takes a lot of time to master. Hell, not even just master, just to get okay at. I know uh, Malcolm Gladwell has his saying about 10,000 hours of doing something, um, you know, with focus uh, brings about mastery. And I, I agree with the sentiment. Sometimes it can be faster, sometimes it can be um, a little longer. But, you know, doing the math, I'm like, okay, I'm a pro artist now. Yeah, I probably put in my 10,000 hours. Like, I think that's fair. Now, on the StarCraft side of things, I've only played, I think my, my thing said, I've played 183 games ever. Now, to put that into perspective, the game's been out for about 12 years, 13 years, something like that. There are people that put in two to 300 games a week, and they've played since the thing came out. So I'm going on a competitive uphill climb against people, you know, that have literally probably put 30,000 games in. Easy. And they have better game sense, they have better knowledge, they know what units counter other units. Basically, StarCraft is a game of rock, paper, scissors. And each rock, paper, scissor has rock, paper, scissors within it. So then it's all about how do you spend your money, how do you, you know, make sure you don't do what's called supply blocking, um, making you not able to build other units. Uh, you know, what are, are you going to expand across the map to get more bases so you can get more money to build stuff? But if you do that, if somebody harasses you early, if they bring in their fighting units early and attack you, you can die because you don't have enough stuff to defend. So it's always this kind of, you know, quid pro quo... Uh, jousting sort of thing um, based on information and skill and so it's very kind of draining it's very mentally taxing but 
it takes time. Getting good at something like that will take time. And now that I'm older, I kind of realize that. And to tie this into artwork, uh, it just takes time. Like, I... You're going to see some... Don't worry, there will be some art video parts later. <laughs> I promise you. Um, there's going to be, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just sketching and not really knowing what the end goal is and just trying to make pool shapes and stuff. I haven't even... I've started a little bit on it, um, but whenever you see the time lapse, that'll be... I'm, I'm recording this before I record the time lapse for that artwork. So I know it's of like a World of Warcraft esque warlock guy, and it's a weird camera angle. Um, basically, I'm doing a lot of things I'm not comfortable with. So with StarCraft, I decided, okay, if I want to get good at this game, if I want to, if I really want this goal to become reality, I have to swallow my pride. And I have to suck. I have to be horrendous at this for 5,000 games. I, I've given myself a limit per month of 50 games. 50 games a month, um, th but that's minimum. I want to do at least 50 games a month. So over the course of, you know, that, that averages to about, what, two, a little less than two matches a night. But I'm averaging about five matches a night, which is nice. But, you know, I, I want to make sure that I'm actually putting in some time to learn these mechanics and learn how this stuff worked. And that's what you have to do with art. Um, I know I brought up the beard thing, and you're probably wondering what that's all about. <laughs> so I'm actually wanting to grow out my beard. The only thing is, there's like patchy spots. There's patchy spots on the sides. People that are growing a beard, you know, if you're of a certain age, uh, you, you, you've dealt with this. And... It looks not great. It's kind of scraggly, like, you know, you can you can trim it up a little bit to kind of nuance it out and kind of, you know, make sure it looks pretty slick, but you have to let it grow. You can't keep trimming it and trimming it and trimming it or else it's never going to do the thing it's supposed to do, which is fill in the gaps of the patchy stuff. So you have this, like, weird time of, like, four to six weeks where your beard does not look very good. Uh, it's patchy, it's weird, like the hairlines don't line up correctly and all that, so it's very bizarre. But it takes patience. The quality result requires patience, and you're going to be tempted. I know I'm tempted all the time. I keep joking with my you know oldest daughter and my wife and stuff, like, guys, this beard looks horrendous. I'm like, don't worry about it. <laughs> They're telling me not to worry about it. They're like, listen, we're the people that got to look at you, and we think it looks okay. You know, it's not any more egregious than anybody else's beard that's growing out, so don't worry about it. Which is nice. You know, it's nice to have support, and that's another thing about patience. If you have patience and you have support systems, the sky's the limit. But it does, it takes time, and you'll get fidgety about it, and you'll be like, oh, it's not where I want it now, maybe I should just call it off. Maybe I should just call this quits. Um, so with StarCraft, I've played, over the past two nights, I think I've played 11 games. I've only won two. That's not a great success rate. But, I can feel myself getting better. I know why I'm losing. I'm understanding more about what I'm looking for in early game. The, the pieces are starting to come together, right? This is, with artwork, this would be your fundamentals. This would be, ah, oh, man, I'm not where I want to be. Maybe I should just call this stuff off. Maybe it's a cool hobby I could draw when I was a kid. You know, but, but you know, am I good enough to go pro? Maybe not, but not yet. Add the word yet to the end of that sentence. If you want to keep pushing, if you want to keep getting better, if you want to start selling commissions, if you want to start oil painting and getting them hung in a gallery, if you want to start working with big clients, do entertainment art or marketing art or concept art or uh, work for a video game studio or you know teach art or whatever your goal is around art you have to to nurture that and have patience you have to give it time to breathe because there's no way coming out of the gate if you still struggle with like perspective for landscapes um, I mean, not even just that. I'm talking like hardcore fundamentals. Like, how do you hold your stylus? How do you hold your pen? Is it in a good way that you're not wearing your wrist out? 
to where you can have more endurance to put a few extra minutes into practice each day. It's like now you're looking at the minutia of it. You're looking at like, are my eyes getting fatigued? Do I need to go take a break? Do I need to look at maybe getting reading glasses? Do I need to um, get some eye drops? Do I need to just really focus more on um, just making sure I can retain focus? Um, do I need to take more regular breaks? That way I can actually work for a longer period of time because instead of doing like a three hour stretch all at once and then you end up groggy and like leaving the computer or leaving your, you know, canvas exhausted, mentally exhausted. Um, what if you go for, you know, 25 minutes at a time and take a 10 minute break, 25 minutes at a time, 10 minute break. It might sound like it takes longer to get the results, but who knows your system of working might compartmentalize things that you're learning faster. You know, they always talk about whenever you learn the best is when you sleep because your brain has time to really absorb knowledge and like what happened during the day and put whatever is on the conscious mind to the subconscious. Literally part of training in StarCraft is, you know, making sure you're building workers. You never miss a supply drop. You never miss, you know, production out of your uh, buildings. You're taking your bases on time. You're doing expands. You're doing all this other stuff. And right now is the hardest that stuff is ever going to be for me. I have to tell myself that this is the hardest it will ever be. And it's tough, man. I'm sweating bullets. I'm like yelling if, a, if one of the, <laughs> even in that replay, like whenever the dude comes and like attacks me, like I was flipping out, like, oh no. But I tried to like calm down and just, okay, worry about the fundamentals. Like build my stuff, build units. I'll have enough units to counter it. And I did. So that's what you gotta do. You, you, gotta, you gotta make yourself a game plan and you gotta stick to it. Yeah, there's gonna be variables. There's gonna be things that end up just not working the way you thought they would. But if you can think on your feet and you have a solid foundation of fundamentals, you're gonna be surprised at what happens. Like with this artwork I'm working on right here, I don't know how it's gonna work because I'm working one on characters, which I don't do very well. I'm just not very good with characters. Um, I always complain that they're kind of tropey. They're not interesting. Um, they're like, my warlock looks like a warlock. Like when you think of generic warlock in the dictionary, that's my warlock. But maybe I just need to get the genericness out by doing them over and over. You know what I mean? Maybe I just need to do those fundamentals and do those grinds of, okay, I'm going to do this type of character and this type of character. And then maybe I get the fundamentals down, the body shapes, the armor looks, the way the hair goes over the face or whatever. And then I can tweak it next time. The next time I do it, maybe they're, maybe they have a bigger upper body or maybe their legs are a little thicker because they do like squats or something. So what do those muscles look like? Then I go find that reference. I go look at that anatomy and then I try to integrate that. And you start sprinkling in these little bits of growth. And that's where I think the power is because you want to get so just almost bored of the fundamentals that they're subconscious. You do not think about them. Every time you pick up a pen or a pencil or whatever, you could draw a perspective grid. You could get stuff on the page. Worrying about where things are doesn't bother you anymore because you have a pretty good idea that you can make a good image. Okay, what am I using? I'm using the rule of thirds. Am I using the Fibonacci sequence? Am I just playing it by sight the rule of cool does it look good okay if it looks good it is good so let's keep pushing you know you you're gonna be able to kind of put those fundamentals on like color mixing how much blue do i need with the red to make the purple that i want those are the fundamentals like people talk about fundamentals as like one and two point perspective and stuff and yeah that's fine but at the end of the day, you have to train your eye to know what's right. You, you have to train stuff that just seems silly. Like, is the color mode on your monitor or on your iPad correct? Like, is the contrast correct? Whenever you make art on your device, is that what it's going to look like on everybody else's device? I mean, the answer is no. But what settings can you do on your monitor to make sure that the most amount of people get a pleasing image that's a fundamental 
how do you save your image file? You know, and I'm not just talking about JPEG or PNG or whatever. I'm talking about like what color mode? RGB, CMYK? Is it going to be for print? Is it going to be for web? But not only that, what color profile? There's such a thing called ICC profiles. Adobe uses them. Um, you use them a lot. You see them a lot with like in the film industry about the way the film is actually produced. And then they do color bleach bypasses and things like that. Like a lot of this stuff, if it deals with optics, people don't really consider it. But I do consider it a fundamental. Go in and if you know what type of project you're working on, what kind of camera they have, you can make a matte painting that matches what they're going to film way easier than if you're just like, oh, I guess here's a forest and it has some green in it. Enjoy. Like you want to make everyone else's job easier by knowing your stuff. You know what I mean? And, you know, of course, that's very high level, but it starts low level too. What type of pencil do you like the best? Do you like a mechanical pencil? Uh, that's my preferred pencil. The little like clicky clicky mechanical pencil with a little eraser on it. That's mine, you know. Some people like the number two pencil. I'm growing more and more accustomed to the number two pencil. You know, the one that you use at school. Little pencil sharpener and all that. I get it. I get it now because I like the mechanical pencil because it makes a very direct, almost like draftsman architecture line. But hey, there's a lot of give on that on that 2B uh, on that 2B lead pencil, you know, or is it 2H? See, I don't know. I need to go study my pencils. <laughs> you know, if I want to get better at sketching, I better know what pencil does what. I better know what blending tool does what. That way, if I have the idea. I know how to act on it on the starcraft side of things oh is my opponent going you know mass you know biological units or mass you know marines or, or are they going like um are they going to the skies do they have a bunch of like plane like flying units okay i need something to take care of those i need to know how to scout that it's going to happen and i need to know how to counter it that's not going to happen with one game or like reading a thing online and like here's how you counter such and such. Yeah, you can read about it and that's fine, but you got to do it. You got to be in the pressure. You got to be in the moment. Make the decision. It'll probably fail the first, I don't know, <laughs> but what is it, 9 out of 11 times? <laughs> I've only won 2 games out of the past 11, but I'm having more fun. I'm in Bronze League right now, which is literally you cannot go lower. Um, and there's a weird MMR thing, a matchmaking, raking thing that's happening. And I probably should be in like mid silver, which is the rank above. Cause like I'm beating, you know, the two people I beat were actually gold level, which is two levels higher than me. And the people that I lost to were platinum, which are three levels higher, like some weird stuff's happening, but I'm just going to take it as it is. Yeah. I'm a bronze player. I don't know the counters. I don't know all the units. Hell, I don't know really any of the units on one of the factions on the Zerg. Uh, they're like the alien race. I don't know hardly any. I know they have roaches. I know they have like banelings that blow up like a little bomb. They roll at you. Um, that's about it, you know. <laughs> I mean, they have the way their economy works is different. Like, I need to learn that stuff. And then if I start practicing my fundamentals, if I get my build orders down, if I don't miss supply drops, if I make stuff out of all of my buildings, the wins will start to come, all right? This is a long-form goal. This isn't a goal that, you know, by, uh, let's see right now, it's August 22nd while I'm recording this. By August 25th, I want to be Grand Masters League. <laughs> like, sorry, bucko, that ain't going to happen. You know, this is one of those things that, hey, by 2025, give myself, what, a year and a half, could I be Diamond League? which is a step below Masters, which is a step below Grandmasters. So Diamond League is kind of the top 15% of players in the world. In two years or in a year and a half, could I do that? Maybe. That's a hell of a hill to climb, especially starting in Bronze, which is the lowest, I think, 8%. Literally 92% of the world is better than me at StarCraft. You know what I mean? Like, that's how I have to look at it. And yeah, it's humbling. And it sucks to know that you suck, but you know, sucking at something is the first step to getting really good at it. So just know that if you suck at doing landscapes, make 50 landscapes. They're going to be terrible and that's fine. 
hell, I'm doing this character thing. I think this is not very good. <laughs> I, I'm looking at this rough sketch right now, and I'm like, oh, man. I got my work cut out for me. Because it works with a perspective I'm not used to. It works in, like, how much do I want to put in this? Do I want to make it more of a sketch or more of a painting? Do I want to use the under sketch as part of a painting? Um, but you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of things kind of rattling around in my brain. And I just got to get in there. I got to get in there and start making big, drastic mistakes and then fixing them. I mean, that's all painting and artwork is at a certain level, right? Just get in there, you know, with my beard. It's like, let that let that thing grow, man. Let, let it grow. Keep it kind of, you know, shaped to where it looks nice. But you just got to, to make it look the way I want it to, it's got to grow a little bit. It's got to really fill out. It's got to, like, make the shape of my face look a certain way, you know. Just patience. Just pay, give yourself patience. Give yourself a timetable, but make the timetable realistic. You're not going to go from taking one or two commissions to being like, I mean, you could do it, but I, it's very rare. You take one or two commissions and you make, you know, like 20 bucks a month or so just doing sketches for friends to being world renowned illustrator in like two months. It's not going to happen. Um, I mean, unless you're already at a huge level and the business just hasn't picked up and you get scouted by somebody or like Magic the Gathering says like, hey, come on, come on board. I've seen it happen. Um, and then it changes people's lives. And it could happen. But you want to set yourself up for success to get there. You want, you want to make sure that you're part of that process, the learning, the constantly testing new ideas and like going kind of workshopping this stuff, make sure that you're putting in the time. You're giving yourself time and tasks and exercises to get to where you want to go. You have to be patient. I know it seems like, and my wife and I talk about this all the time, because of COVID, everybody's time sense has been warped. Because it's like, oh, life is fragile. And we got to... Oh, we got to cram everything in. We got to hurry and uh, global warming. No, the world's going to blow up any second. Like there's this <laughs> constant pressure cooker around us. But if we, if we take that step back and we realize that what we really need is patience, we need that patience to carry us through. We have to give ourselves grace, knowing that we're not where we want to be, but telling ourselves that the hardest the hardest day is today. Today is the day you have the least amount of skill compared to the rest of your life. Right? So yeah, I lost 9 out of my 11 matches and I feel like a doofus. But the match I showed you guys, I won. And that was against a gold level. I've never been a gold level. My best ranking was a low silver back in like 2013. And I was a real tryhard back then too. I was like, oh, I'm going to get amazing at starcraft within a month and i just spoiler alert did not get amazing at starcraft within a month <laughs> so this is why i'm giving myself a ton of time nobody needs to know what my username is in fact i blurted it out of this video because it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if people can like look up my account no he, he lost that game and he should have won it but his his macro wasn't very good but his micro was off he didn't split his units like who cares who cares i care no one else cares. <laughs> so, you know, it's just the exercise. It's the exercise of getting better at something. And it's a lot of fun because I feel more engaged in my artwork as well. Now that I've started doing this side thing with StarCraft, um, the beard not so much. You can't really, there's no exciting part of growing a beard. You just kind of grow it. Uh, <laughs> But with StarCraft, it's exciting. You get that sensation that, oh, I'm improving. I'm learning something. You know, I picked up my guitar again. Um, I play guitar a little bit. I've played for years and years, you know, over a decade. But it's fun to go in and learn a new scale. Or, like, learn, even though it's an instrument I'm very familiar with, be like, oh, that's how they got that sound. Oh, I see. So whenever they do the, the A chord, they do the bar chord like this. But then they go down an octave, and then they blah, blah, blah. You know, you start mixing in that music theory, and you still learn. And there's still tons to learn about this stuff, you know? So with StarCraft, I need to know what every unit in the game does, how to build it, how much it costs, like, what's it good for, what's it not good for, what counters it. 
that's the fundamentals. Then I work on my build orders, I get better at playing the game and scouting information and stuff like that, playing against my opponent. For the first while, I'm not even going to worry about my opponent. I'm just going to worry about executing my stuff better. Because I had a football co coach that said this and it always stuck with me. Like whenever we were in practice and stuff like that, we would talk about winning big games and oh, it's the you know regionals and all this other stuff. And he's like, who cares? He was like, if you worry about your job, if you worry about your fundamentals, your tackles are on point, you know, receivers grab the ball and bring it in. You know, if you do the fundamentals correctly, the score takes care of itself. And it, like, changed my outlook. And I was like, wait, you're right. And, oh, he was kind of a genius because once we did the fundamentals, we won the state championship two years in a row. You know what I mean? So, like, if you do the fundamentals, the score takes care of itself. So another version of this of this whole patience thing that I've kind of really come to like lately, and I, I tell like anyone that will listen, is you should chase after skills, not jobs. Okay? Chase after the skills, not the jobs. Because if you got the skills, the jobs will come. You know, people are gonna scout you out um, and hire you based on your flexibility or you know, the way you render something or whatever. But they're going to come to you because you have what it takes. Because you put in the time, you have shown patience with the process and given yourselves tons of opportunities to fail, but more importantly, tons of opportunities to learn from those failures, get better, and never have to worry about it again. It's all subconscious now. You know the answers to these problems because you've done it 5,000 times. You come from a place of experience. And that brings about knowledge, and through patience, that knowledge becomes mastery, right? So, I know this is a weird one. I know the motivational ones are everybody's favorite. <laughs> Actually, they're the least viewed <laughs> on the channel. But if I'm like, here's my favorite brush and, you know, Clip Studio Paint, it's going to get 5,000 views. Um, but I think these topics are very important because I think... It's a hard gig being an artist, whether you're a hobbyist or you're just learning or you've been a professional for 10 years. It's never easy. It's always taxing. It's always draining, but it's always worth it. And I think having these type of like, I don't know, little mini coaching courses, I hope it helps you keep that endurance up. Um, basically, just treat yourself better. Be patient with yourself. Be patient with the process and good things are going to come. And if you play StarCraft, you should play me and you're going to win because I'm not very good. <laughs> that's the real that's the real moral of this story. But that's my time. I'm Wes. Go follow me on socials and stuff. Pick up that landscape techniques tutorial if you're interested. Um, there's going to be links to that in the description below. Uh, but yeah, that's my time. Go be patient with yourself. Uh, good things will come to those who wait. Patience is a virtue. What are the other platitudes? I can't remember them all, but there's a lot of them, and there's a lot of them for a reason, because they're all pretty much true. But go out there, make cool art, and we'll talk to you later. Peace.